Inside, NYPD dismantling and taking down of two violent Queen NY gangs. Bro, right now is the worst time to be a gangster. No bullshit. Like, if you was going to choose to be a gangster, right now is the worst time. They found a cheat code that they didn't even know they could do. Like, wait, hold on. We could hit these niggas with Ricos and just hit them with conspiracies over the dumb shit they just post up on the internet all day? Oh, this is easy. Like, yo, why are we wilding? Why are we wilding? They just sending Ricos left and right, right and left. Everybody's getting hit. This is the time to go to work, bro. If you had to choose a time to sell crack, or go to work, this is the time to go to work. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All do your shit by yourself. Cause I feel like gangsters that are alone or plugs that are alone, you can't get hit with a Rico. We fall deep. Like I, you probably could, but I'm just saying the odds of it. Every time I see these Ricos happen, it's 37 niggas getting locked up over some dumb shit. Fox 5 New York's Lisa Evers was embedded with an elite group of NYPD detectives as they took down two violent warring gangs accused of murders and violent shootings. The long-term investigation began with the murder of a promising team basketball player. Nearly four years later, NYPD detectives say they have dismantled two rival gangs who terrorized South Jamaica, Queens residents with reckless gunfire, using drill music videos and social media to fuel the beef. We got an exclusive look at their focused methods, very different from the wide net gang sweeps of the past. Some of the more than 30 suspects were already behind bars in state prison and on Rikers Island for other crimes. Insane. They were brought into the 111th precinct in New York City to be charged in the major gang conspiracy case. One suspect even cursed at our camera. So serious were the safety concerns about the explosive rivalry between the crews, known as Money World and their opposition, or Ops, the local trap stars, oh, that police booked them at separate precincts to keep their family members and associates separated when they showed up. It's pretty much shoot on sight when they see the opposition. And a lot of times, innocent people are caught in the middle of it, said Sergeant Jeffrey Liu, K supervisor of the NYPD's Gun Violence Suppression Division, GVSD. It all began with one teen's murder. Even though this is super random, but the promising basketball player talking, they're not talking about Diddy, right? Because Diddy was from the Bronx. I'm still like, there's no way that, that they're talking about Diddy and he got taken out by Queens dudes. That should make no sense. That'll be insane, okay? You guys know any information on the, or unless they talk about the basketball player, let's Officials think this could be the largest gang takedown in history in the borough of Queens, and Fox 5 was given exclusive access as it happened. The Queens District Attorney, along with the NYPD Chief of Detectives, announcing the 151 count indictment of 33 alleged gang members. Officials say all 33 defendants are charged with conspiracy to commit murder, and that 18 of those were. I told you, you hit somebody with conspiracy, you hit somebody with the reek. Bro, it's hard to beat the conspiracy. Conspiracy alone, like just alone, if you and your boys are all in like a massive like mule plug and y'all pushing a whole bunch of shit everywhere and doing a lot of shit, you get me? A lot of drug shit. If one of y'all know and y'all basically just don't tell the 12, that's a conspiracy charge right there, you get me? Like that alone is a conspiracy charge. So shit like that, I always be keeping in mind, you get me? We're active trigger pullers. It's definitely not worth it, They bro. say the defendants are members of warring gangs trying to establish territorial do That's a musket? Like what is this? Is that is that is that the, the Elmer Fudd? No, nah, that's crazy. And the duct tape on the grip, you know that one got a body. No bullshit. All the other shits, I don't know. But that one right there in particular, if I had to guess, that one got a body. That's a dirty one right there. That shit definitely got a body on it. Dominance mm -hmm. in Southeast Queens. More than one. The gun violence escalated after the high profile murder of an aspiring high school basketball star four years ago. Well, the gang war was set off by a slashing in April of... Rest in peace to that child. Rest in peace to anyone affected from that murder. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. 2019 the tensions and the violence between the warring factions escalated after the murder of 14 year old Amir Griffin in October of 2019 Drought. Rest in peace to Amir Griffin. This investigation, it was determined that members of these gangs intended to commit murder and shoot opposing gang members based solely on their alliances and territorial disputes. 30 guns. You see them there. They were seized in this gang takedown. But before today's sweeping indictment was That's announced sore. against members of two violent street gangs, our own Lisa Evers was embedded with the operation as NYPD detectives rounded up the suspects. And she is here now to bring us this Fox 5 exclusive. Lisa, take it away. Well, Chris, this long-term investigation began with the see murder of a promising phone? teen basketball player. Now, nearly four years later, NYPD detectives tell us they have dismantled two 
rival gangs who terrorize South Jamaica. Is he the one that they said? And even one of them cursed at us. <laughs> they bleeped his mouth, I'm assuming that's him. For residents with reckless gunfire, using drill music videos and social media to fuel their beefs. We got an exclusive look at their focused methods, which are very different from the wide net gang sweeps of the past. Some of the more than 30 suspects were already behind bars in state prison and on Rikers Island for other crimes. They were brought into the 111. Yeah, he got tight because at 12, tapped him on the knee like, all right, man, it's time to go. Don't fucking touch me, nigga, my boy. We ain't cool. We ain't in the same side of life. Precinct to be charged in this major gang conspiracy case. He want so serious with. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. Why am I shocked? He from New York. I don't know what I was expecting him to say. I, I, I kind of thought he was going to say, fuck your life, bing. Bong. Like, I don't know what I thought he was gonna say. The fact he said, eat my dick is hilarious. Like, it's not even funny, but it's funny as crazy as that sounds. It's not even funny, but it's funny. Hold on, I gotta go back one more time. The fact he looked at Shorty like he was about to say something interesting and it just hit it with crazy. Conspiracy case. So serious get with out, the safety out, concerns boom. about the explosive rivalry between the crews known as Money World and their opposition or ops, the local trap stars, that police booked them. Hold on, so these niggas locked up both sides? They locked up the beef and the, like, both sides of the gang? Nah, that's nuts. It's separate precincts to keep their family. Yeah, they hit both of them niggas. They hit both of them. They're like, yo, y'all killing each other, bet. They locked up both sides and put them niggas in two different prisons. That's crazy. Members and associates separated when they showed up. It's pretty much shoot on sight when they see the opposition. Um, and a lot of times, innocent people are caught in, in the middle of it. Over the last five or six years, these two gangs uh, terrorized the entire community. Before sunrise, more than 150 NYPD detectives and super Supervisors. Yo, why New York DTs are always dressed like this? Like, who you catching, nigga? Like, if you see, if this would have worked, no cap. If you back in my old city of Rhode Island, you a, a nigga in West Ward. Like, he looked like he's probably on some shit. You get me? I might believe it, but I always found out. A good way to catch the 12s when they faking as fiends. Look at their teeth, bro. Look at their teeth. Because anybody that knows fiends, y'all know these fiends be walking around with a chiclets. Yellow chiclets. Not all 32 of these bitches. Cops be all dressed like a custy, dragging their feet down the street. Open their mouth, got a perfect pair of white teeth. Like, nah, hold on. Something's up. Something is wrong. PD detectives and supervisors yeah, like assembled for the takedown of the alleged gang members. Most are between the ages of 18 to 22 and have been arrested before. This started in uh, the Baisley houses when Amira Griffin got uh, uh, shot and killed. In October 2019, 14-year-old Amir Griffin, a Cardozo High School student athlete, was the unintended target of a shooting. He was killed on the basketball courts near his home. John, anything you want to say? 18-year-old Sean Brown was arrested for the murder and is part of this case. That could have been me. It could be my cousins, my nephews. I mean, it no cap though, just a kid playing ball. You get me? Like, if he wasn't part of none of this gang shit, if he is, then you know you sign up for it. There's not much I could really go crazy about. But if he was just a kid playing ball and really an inspiring basketball player in the city, it's like, it's like, it's not even worth it, bro. It's like, you can't even let your kids be outside playing ball, playing baseball. Like, it's a scary city. And again, I moved from the Bronx up to Rhode Island. Like, before I was up there and I was always in and out, you get me? Every weekend, always back home and shit. So I was always back in the city, the even little split. Being there, being in the heights and shit, just, it's crazy because I always looked at it as like home to me, you get me? I always felt like I was a lion in the, and when I was in Rhode Island, I felt like a lion in the zoo or some shit, like a monkey in the, like a monkey being looked at through a glass window, like, nah, you gotta bring me back to the jungle, bro. Like, I don't wanna be here. I don't wanna be here. It took me so long to escape that place. No cap, that shit sound like a mental ward in my life. I be talking about that state, bro, like PTSD really be running through my mind and shit. And really, it all comes down to me trying to be an NY. But life don't really know what way it could have went. You get me? It don't know what way it could have went. I could have been crazy. I could have been tied up on some gang shit. So, kind of happy that life went the way it went, all to say. You get me? I always wanted to be stayed home, stay in the X, you get me, stayed in the Bronx and shit, but if life would have played out the way it played out, that I don't know. A lot of my niggas from the city, a lot of my family from the city all look at me like a hero and some shit. I'm not, I'm nowhere near where I'm trying to get to, bro. I'm nowhere near in life where I'm trying to get to. And niggas already look at me like, oh, this nigga's good. Like, he did everything he was going to say he was going to do. Like, no, I did everything I said I was going to do in my 20s. I ain't do everything I said I was going to do. Let's relax, because I still got to get to it. Just sad that that had to happen, but 
today we, we we have justice for the family as detectives investigated That's crazy, they found a connection they... to other shootings that were happening in south jamaica somewhere in broad oh, wow. daylight one even outside a high school police say an escalating rivalry between the money world and local trap star gangs was responsible once a shooting occurs and there's retaliation for that you shooting it so goes back cool and, and forth and, uh, like, it seems like, like they're never satisfied with the amount of violence they've like, committed he didn't have a, and I'm they're always trying to get one up on their opposition captain gillis says the rivalry is over territory not money or drugs. The hatred heated up over social media taunts and drill music videos where they allegedly bragged about the shootings, the actual locations, and even the calibers of guns used in incidents under investigation. The drill rap is always a... a no bullshit. The drill sound worse when they put it on the news. I'm like, damn, that's what I really be driving around. I'm over here driving a 19 year old smoking each other. Like, damn, you gotta... I be, I be feeling mad bad. Like, nigga, act your age. Listen to some fucking ghost face killer. <laughs> Go listen to some more, what's it, most deaf or some shit, like, oh, no. Oh, Talib Khalib, no! No! <laughs> Every time I be out here listening to k Flock, d thing, driving around with my shit on me, like, yeah, like, nah, bro, you a old-ass nigga, and this should, be a, this should be inspiring you to do, act up a little bit too much, you be feeling the music a little bit too much, so now bring yourself back to a 17, 18-year-old, and you telling these niggas, nah, you gotta just stay smart, know that it's only music, like, bro, I'm telling you, back in my days... Back in my days, back to my old head shit. See, I'm not that old. Back when I was in high school and shit was really on this time, like the close out is really Chicago drill. That's when I was in high school, like the Chief Keef era. I was in high school for that shit. Bro, niggas was going stupid to love Sosa. I don't like 300. Me and my niggas, me don't play around. Load them choppers, load them K100 rounds. I'm on the top, it's just us, nigga. Like, bro, I was obsessed with Fredo, Reese. Dirk with the dreads before he cut it off and then grew the dreads again. Like, I'm telling you, that is what the New York drill reminds me of. I'm just happy that it's in New York. You get me close to home and shit. So I understand why these kids, you get me, why they love it so much. If you think about back poly when, if y'all young watching this, back when y'all were kids, y'all were probably hearing, probably hearing them talking on the news about Chicago drill. And if you was my age in high school, y'all remember they was looking at us crazy during that Chicago drill era motivator right and the drill rap is so specific in that they mention people uh that have been killed in the past and disrespect those people that have been killed in the past and it creates a residual effect where it's a tit for tat a one for one everyone's trying to get one up on the scoreboard that creates a retaliatory effect on both sides chief you have a lot of members of the NYPD here who is here and involved in this operation yeah so this uh, this operation involves uh, members of the detective bureau in particular is two different units it's called queen south uh, vcs in addition to that, it's a gun violence suppression unit. What's happening here right now is you see different groups getting together. They're getting their assignments and they're also getting their get orders from like, their superiors about like animals in the wild and shit. What you see here is 12 game ready to mess up somebody's day how they're going to do this raid, how they're going to take these suspects in. Detectives from local precincts as well as warrants, homicide, and narcotics yeah, units provided backup and were involved in the tactical like attack in meeting to review strategy. Most of you guys know you know they're DT. We're going to be on the team. We're going to move in a tactically. Uh, we're going to take our time when we get into the location. We're going to make sure we communicate with the people out. They ask me and my cameraman to take the precautions too. So they're giving us bulletproof vests. I don't get paid enough, bro. Many of the suspects you must get paid millions being a reporter for me to wear a bulletproof vest. I wish my job would tell me when I clock into with my nine to five. We head out onto the highway vest. towards South you got me Jamaica. Up. We're part of an NYPD caravan I wish you right would. now going to the various locations. I would need a raid for that job. Detectives will you that. be apprehending the suspects in this case. Three, two, we arrive at the house. The detectives surround it according nice to plan, place. while others do a door knock and go in. Oh, with the I be seeing mad people from the Bronx too. It's crazy seeing this happening in Queens. I be seeing mad people in the Bronx, even Harlem and everything. Always roasting in Brooklyn when niggas say Queens, like ah Queens. God, y'all niggas ain't. This is because they live in houses like this. Don't think you won't get spanked or blown off your, blown off the block. Because a nigga living in an old Victorian home. like a warrant for the suspect. Musket. The detectives were able to find the person that they were looking for. They have taken this suspect in custody. They were in the house. They came out. That's no shots have been fired. Name, this suspect, who was wanted for murder, is brought in to be booked. Another nah, team returns terrible. with a suspect who Walking wasn't part of the original case. You may not Police be say he panicked and threw this gun out the window while the officers were looking for someone else. Get that f you telling me the cops weren't even looking for this old ass nigga and he just saw the 12 and just happened to throw a gun? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Shots have been fired. Wait, wait, this wait. This suspect wait. who was wanted for murder is brought in to wait. be booked. 
Another team returns with a suspect who wasn't part of the original. Also, they said another team returns. This old ass nigga get out the car. Like another team. Another team. This man look like a corpse. It's like he's ready to go. There's no way in New York your life could be that hard. You struggling that much. This nigga like Doc. Remember when Kyrie dressed like the old man? That's what you're telling me happened. No case. Police say he panicked and threw this gun out the window while the officers were looking for someone else. Get that you tell me that's a team? You telling me that right there is a team? Nah, though. Yeah, you right, bro. I was talking about John about that. The undercover whips in New York be crazy. They pull up in a regular Honda Civic, bro. Honda Civic all tinted down. Shit got rims on it. It's dropped and all. Tinted down. You thinking a nigga plug too? You trying to knock and try to get a dub? You got a bud? Put the window down. They put the window down. There's just four white niggas looking back at you and just slide it back up like, Hi, Jesus. Hi, Jesus. They got this old nigga coming out saying a teen. A teen? Nah. And y'all be disrespectful calling me an old head. Like, bro, look at this nigga. They called him a teen. Like, nah, nah, chill, chill. I need, I need a new title. I need a new title. They got a missing tooth. He spit through the tooth. The NYPD says this case, I can't work like others like in that. recent years, shows that when they do sharply I mean, focused investigations... RPT! And they really got mad gangs just this year alone, bro. They hit RPT. Full set, full set. They hit the Valentine. I'm sure that I'm like 90% sure Valentine is where uh, around where TJ's from. Little TJ, G side. I don't know FNO. I don't know. Woo. Do I gotta explain? Do I gotta explain? That's my best in <laughs> impersonation. RCG impact don't know. H block impact don't. And take the most violent offenders off the streets. The surrounding communities experience a drop in gun violence. These guys. Did horrific violence out in uh, the streets of South Jamaica. So it's a victory for the community today that these guys are actually all apprehended. Countless acts, several homicides, non-fatal shootings, bad. incidents of gunfire throughout the community absolutely took its toll. And I'm happy that we were able to deliver a clear message today that that won't be tolerated. Of course, all of the suspects are presumed innocent until proven guilty, but the NYPD says they have more than enough evidence to support the charges so that they will not be able to shoot anyone again for a very long time. Chris? Wow, Lisa, excellent work. Thank you very much. Eat Officials think this could him. be the large... <laughs> Yo, this is why I try to tell the young boys out there, bro. I'm telling you, this street life shit, it sounds fun. Again, I was your age, bro, one day. You get me? So it's like, do I want to go work for a nigga to tell me what to do for me to make this bullshit amount of money? Or do I want to go do some wild shit that I'm going to make probably 15000 in three days, but I can, I can probably get arrested and do six years? You gonna do six years for 15 bands, bro? I don't want y'all to do the math and know how much money I make that quickly, but let me tell you that it don't take me that long to make 15 bands. Like, if you work a good job and you make a good amount, you make a well a little bit over, like, you get me, like, 50, 60, something bands, you get me? You gonna see 15 bands mad quick, bro. You gonna see, now, if you making 30,000 a year, then I'm ready to risk it all, too. Shit, I'm ready to risk it all, too. 15 bands for one play, I make 30,000 in one year, fuck it, I'm ready to risk it all, too. At that point, I'm ready to risk it all too. But if you're making a good amount, you're an educated person, you see more for yourself, why sell yourself short and just do something like this that it could be detrimental to your life and maybe you can take a wrong decision or do something for like 10, 15, even 20, even five bands that you're going to go to jail for for five years. Unless your math is bad or what, bro, never in my life. Never in my life, never in my life. It just never made sense to me. You're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to sit there. A nigga try to offer me some shit. I'm like, all right, word. How much time can I get for that charge? I bet. How much am I getting paid? I'm gonna take out my calculator and be like, all right, so in that same time, I can get, I can go to jail for this for five years. In five years, if I continue making the exact same salary, don't even get a promotion, I'll be making exactly this. This nigga wants to pay me for 3% of what I'll probably see, maybe even less than 3 And you want me to risk my freedom to see dick balls and sales? You are crazy, crazy. All that to say is my people, don't ever let nobody make you feel bad for you graduating college. I graduated college and I gotta give you guys that vlog. That shit has been sitting there for a minute. Johnson & Whale alumni feel very happy because no one can ever take my education. I went to school for marketing. Just find something that you love and you're passionate for. Marketing, look, I use it for my YouTube. I use it for my job. I do marketing for different companies and brands. Something that I love and actually been always interested in because it ruined my life, bro. I'll see a commercial and want to go do, that's advertisement, but I'll see a commercial and be like, fuck it, I want McDonald's. I don't even, I never wanted McDonald's, but the commercial just made me think of that as a kid and I was always fascinated on why. Went to school for marketing, never looked back. I'm super happy, thank God. 
You guys just gotta find what you love in life and go after that. Don't don't sell yourself short. Unless you're stupid. Now, if you look in the mirror, let's be real with ourselves. Not everybody's smart. Like I tell my girl, somebody gotta work at McDonald's. You get me? I don't want everybody to go to college and graduate. I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I'm not a vigilante. I don't I'm not here for the for, for everybody. You get me? I'm here for the niggas that wanna feed themselves. If you don't wanna feed yourself, I'm gonna tell you not as cool, bro. Go work at the McDonald's. Go work over here, which is nothing wrong with that, because you might be young and this is your early job. Never want to shit on niggas working. It's good you're working on McDonald's. But what I'm saying is some niggas got to be the manager there, because I want to go get a Big Mac after work, bro. So there has to be somebody there to take my order. I'm happy not all y'all boys go to college. I'm happy some of y'all niggas make 50, 40 bands, being a store manager or some shit, and you a grown-ass adult, and you happy with that. You want to know why? Because when I go to Vans, I need a store manager in there to make sure when I return my shit, she's there to process my return. We can't have everybody be a CEO. There's not that many companies out there. You get me? So if you want to sell yourself short, it's, I'm perfectly fine with it. Me, I'm going to sell myself for the best because I know I'm great. I know I'm here. I grew up in the hood with y'all niggas. Came from the Bronx. Came, then parents got divorced by the age of eight. Was with a single parent, nigga. Again, everything y'all can say y'all went through, nigga, I went close to enough. Maybe we not all got the same exact cause, but we all went close to enough because we all lived in the hood. You get me? We all lived in the hood. We went through similar shit. And let's just say I'm not even 30 years old and I see, a, I see, I, I make more than some niggas' parents, you get me? Making, that's just with my nine to five, not even going through, that's just my college nine to five shit, my marketing shit. That's my corporate shit. And I'm doing, I'm able to do shit like this. Oh, I want to move. Oh, I want to get up and go here. Oh, I want to go to this event. Oh, I want to, Kanye's going to be at one event. Let's go. Drake's going to be where? Let's go. That's, I put myself in this position. I work hard every day, bro. But that's why I always say I got the blower on me. Ain't no nigga taking me out of my position. And, you know, just make, make sure everything you do is smart in life because you pulling the trigger on somebody that don't care about their life and they probably the same nigga making 15 bands just for quick plays every seven months and shit. You're going to take this nigga out of his misery, right? He's probably going to be happy you take him out of sneakers. Now, you went to school, you graduated, you got yourself in positions that people in your neighborhoods usually don't and you threw it all away for this bum nigga. There's times that I want to send the niggas to their makers. And I would sit there and think to myself, like, bro, was the disrespect really worth it? Did that nigga really violate you to that level that you're going to have to really take this boy out of his sneakers? And then you just sit there and think about it. Was the last 10 years of you struggling, doing everything you did? Because only you know. Only I know the days I used to go work at Hasbro Toy Company, working as an intern, bro, getting paid pennies and getting coffee for niggas and shit. Then going to do, think about YouTube. That's when I started the channel and shit. Only recorded like three times. But doing that. Then working side gigs and just doing a whole bunch of shit. Doing my clothing, higher movie shit. Going to school still. I was going to night school, bro, from 6 to 9 p.m. to still get my college courses in. Now I'm going to throw all that shit away for a nigga that been smoking weed, watching YouTube and M NBA Youngboy videos. Is nah, my nigga. Just the, the, the math don't add up. Just stay smart. Know yourself. If you stupid, stay stupid. If you smart, get that bag, boy.